are so happy to have you with us tonight. Well, I am very happy to be here and I apologize for the horse voice. I'm a little under the weather, but still equally as excited to be here. Oh, you can't be under the weather. You've got so much stuff going on. I do. That's what I keep saying. This can't be happening, but at least it's this week, not next week at the Reader's Take Denver. So. Good point, right? Stock up on all the vitamin C, vitamin D, emergency packets. Definitely. Get you 100% well for next week, right? Yeah. And I came armed with cough drops today, so, so I'm ready. <laughs> well, even more so than we appreciate you joining us tonight. Well, happy to be here, really. So it was fun listening to everybody talk and hearing the people who are coming to Reader's Tech Denver and that Riders with Wrinkles, actually, we're going to have that seminar. He really? Was thinking, not this year, but in 2024. 2024. I've been working on a lot of cool stuff for 2024. So it's very fun to hear her talk about that since we're gonna, going to have him with us. So Awesome. Well, Lisa, let's start off easy. Go ahead and can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you first got started in writing? Oh, I owned a very large staffing agency and I worked all the time. I flew back and forth between Austin and Dallas a lot. Um, I, so all the people from Texas, I'm actually from Texas. The corporate office was in Austin, but I spent a lot of time in our Dallas office. And um, one day I just was like, you know what? I haven't read a book in forever and I've always been a big reader. I'm just going to read on the plane. And then I gobbled it up and I said, I'm going to write a book. And I did really fast. I went to an RT convention and uh, they had this moment when they said, everybody who's actually finished a book, raise your hands. I'm like, well, why would you be here spending this money if you hadn't for the inspiring author part? <clears throat> and um, only half the room raised their hands. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I'm just one of these people who goes full steam into it. Now the first book sucked, but you know, that's a lot of authors. And I've heard other authors talk about this. Like I actually got the rights back to some of my old books because I did not want them to be published. <laughs> and, um, and it's funny because they'll say, well, but a reader will say, I love that book. And then I'm like, well, I'm so glad they loved it. But you know, as a writer, you feel like you grow over time. And then I think that your more current voice feels more familiar to you. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's pretty much how it happened. I actually won an aspiring author contest at RT and I just, um, I sold my business and I started writing and I, it just really inside out, my inside out series is when my writing career really became more than writing category romance when it really exploded for me. And it was a really fun time. What do you think was the biggest shift when you were moving from the category to more of the standalones and, and like you said making that shift what was the real impact there for you well it was very hard because back in the day before india existed a lot of people don't know this um to get out of category was very hard everybody called you a category author and it did not matter that you could write other things and then i became like the queen of being an, an anthology with every other author and it was like i was never going to get to single title and I did, um, but really the big hit was I start, Indy started taking off and I was one of the first ones to jump in really, really big. And so I, I jumped in with my Tall, Dark and Deadly series and it took off and hit the times a bunch of times and um, which was a great honor. Um, and that was like, then the New York publishers suddenly were like, well, she can write something other than category. But it was not because I didn't force them to see that I could write something more than category. I mean, there was no way to do it, but get an agent, send out queries, do all those things back in that time. I mean, I'm aging myself because that's how long I've been in this business. <laughs> I, it's crazy. When I got in the business, there were so many old school people that I idolized who aren't even around anymore. And then I go, oh, God, I'm kind of one of the old school people now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's so inside. But even that said, I, I'll say that when I first... Um, when Tall, Dark, and Deadly hit big, um, I remember telling my husband, because I said, this is the thing, people thought I was crazy when I sold my staffing business. They were like, you know, why would you do that? You're making money, you're successful, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was like, you know, I'm a certain age, and if I don't do it now, what if I'm afraid to do it later? I have to do this. And I was pretty poor for a while because of it, because category romance is, you know, unfortunately school teacher pay, which we all know isn't what it should be. Um, so it, it was hard. So I remember when I first hit big with Tall, Dark and Deadly, I told my, my husband how much money I was going to make. And actually he was like, 
I don't believe you. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that can't be true. I'm like, it's true. I showed him. He's like, I'm not going to believe you till it's in the bank account. Like he just could, I think he was just afraid that, wow, this, you know, to accept that it was happening. So it was like a real transition, like chasing my dream, despite going from having money to being poor to do it. And a lot of people telling me I was absolutely crazy. But the way I look at that is, is that that's okay. Because if you think I'm crazy and I still manage to chase my dream and, and make it a career, then maybe it inspires you to do the same. So that's how I looked at it. At the time, it wasn't as easy to look at it that way, though. <laughs> Believe me, it was hard when people were going, you're crazy, Lisa. But I did it. <laughs> I think with that, I mean, what was your motivation? Because that can be so hard if everyone's telling you you're crazy and you end up with such a financial difference with that too, which kind of adds on to it. I mean, it seems like a series of all these different things piling on, how do you bust through that and stick with your goals? It's not easy. I mean, we moved to New York right about this time too, which the cost of living in New York is insanity. I mean, it was costing like $900 to fill our oil tank back then. I can't imagine what it's like now. And I was like, what is an oil tank? Why do they not use gas? You know, I'm like, well, I don't understand. I mean, it's very different regionally what happens. It was like learning a whole new world. And there was a point where I was like, I can't do this. I, I We have to have money. And I applied for a job at, as an executive and got it right away. And I'm like, no, I didn't want to get it. I I mean, it's a compliment, but I don't want to get it. And then I cried and I turned down the job. And I went back to saying, I'm just going to fight through it. This is my dream. And I've always been somebody who's been very dogmatic about, I, I can do this. Um, I've told my kids they can do anything they want to do. I have to prove it, you know, that sometimes it takes hard work, but you can get there. You just can't give up. And um, I mean, I, I was close to giving up a number of times, but I just think perseverance, you just have to stick it out and push harder and look at another angle. And, you know, Tall, Dark and Deadly, I actually released the first book and it didn't do great. I repackaged it as Tall, Dark and Deadly and it took off. So it's just an idea of repackaging, changing, approaching things differently, learning how to do it. And the world changes all the time. I mean, no matter what industry you're in, one thing is temporary staffing taught me is what goes up must come down. I mean, when I, I mean, there was a time when I was going viral on Facebook. Now it's TikTok, whatever it might be, it'll be here and gone. And so it's all about learning the business side of things, which is one perseverance always, which I think is the case in any dream, but also in business. Um, but also um, looking, if you haven't ever read who moved my cheese? It is the best business book, but it also is a life book. I mean, and the audio book lasts maybe 15 minutes, but it's a life-changing 15 minutes. And for those who haven't, you have you read it? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and for anybody who hasn't, it's you know, basically the moral of the story is that the mice, you know, some of the mice keep going back to the same pile of cheese. And I used to make all my employees. Uh, read this book um and they'd be like but this cheese this pile's great this pile's great and one of them would be like no we gotta find another one the pile's getting low no this this pile's still great but you, i think it's a life lesson in everything that it has you can't get too comfortable you have to look at what's changing and move with it and try and even be ahead of it if you can mm -hmm. and um so i mean i think that i've survived this business because i am always with the whom of my cheese mentality <laughs> And, and some people give up, you know, if they're doing really well, I've seen people that were doing so well and they just left the business when there was a shift, mm. you know, KU came around when TikTok came around, whatever it might be, they didn't hold out. And then here they chase their dream and then they feel like they lost their dream. And really they just need to stick it out, you know, hang in there because mm -hmm. it, it'll change again, you know. And I think that's also seen, I mean, with your writings in the, your different stories and your different genres that you've moved between, I mean, the contemporaries, we've got, you know, the bad boys and, and uh, you know, it's where they're, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's, it's, there's the dark elements, the tragedies, but then you're also writing suspense, you've morphed into harder thrillers, but you also have some paranormal there in your background too. I do. I loved those paranormals. And I'm actually going to go back to my Zodiac series at the end of the year. Really? Yes. I love that series. It's really um, a series that I enjoyed writing so much. And I was, I was really looking at it and saying, what do I love to write? Because that's what I want 
to do. And I, I, I'm excited about doing that again. My husband loves paranormal, so he's so excited for me to do that. But thrillers, I mean, ultimately thrillers are my heart. Um, Inside Out, you know, which has been my series. It's been in Hollywood for 10 years and still not been made. But I mean, stars and Paramount and all over the place. It's been like, I call it my champagne and tears roller coaster ride. Um, Because I mean, we've been to the point of, oh, we're casting to, oh, the head of the studio is now gone the next morning and we're not casting. I mean, I've literally had those kinds of things happen. But I mean, that series is, it has a very strong thriller element to it. You know, who do you trust? What is happening? And that's why Hollywood likes it a lot. But so always from the beginning that those thriller elements, I think, are what I do best and what I like the most. Um, Though I I love the romance in like Inside Out, the characters, the heartache, the love, the romance, all of that is is a big passion to me. But yeah, I'm I'm writing for Thomas and Mercer as L.R. Jones, and I'm super excited about that. I got to start my very first career starred Publishers Weekly Review. And I'm pumped about that. I mean, Inside Out, when it hit the New York Times a bunch of times and all, they wouldn't even review me, I guess, because it's romance, um, and which is frustrating to all of us romance lovers. Right? Why do mm-hmm. you snap us so much, you know? So, I, but I was very excited. I got, I was like, I know some people might not understand, but for this, they, they're very stingy with starred reviews. So to get one um, and for my launch for Thomas and Mercer was really well it is very exciting because that's not out yet <laughs> do you find that you have to switch into a different mentality when you're writing your lr jones books i do and even um lila love if some people read to her she's i, I love lila because she's you know she says everything that you think but don't dare say um, but she doesn't discriminate against anything but stupid. I mean, you could be tall, short, gay, you're straight, whatever. But if you're stupid, Lila doesn't like you. But she's also, yeah, there's a mentality when writing her. But it, the same as with L.R. Jones, because really, I think Lila belongs more to my L.R. Jones identity. Um, identity. Um, there's always a crime scene. There's always, you know, that those grisly crime scenes that she deals with in between love and family and everything else. And um, that, that's a, diff, a very different mentality to write. Um, one is driven by, you know, the crime or, or the element of what is really happening. And one is driven by the romance. Although like in You Look Beautiful Tonight that's coming out in June, um, ultimately, you know, she's this timid librarian who feels like she's always overlooked in the way that all of us feel in our life sometimes. You know, it doesn't matter whether... It's, you know, work-related, personal, you know, an invitation to a party, whatever it is, um, or you're just trying to achieve something, you feel like you never get there. We all have moments in life. And then she starts getting these notes from people, or uh, people, a person who said, you look beautiful tonight, you look, you know, all these little notes, and she starts dressing nicer and feeling more confident, and then it turns into a real obsession, and what would somebody do if they become obsessed with you? And to me, I think that that's a little bit still similar to what you find in a romance in that um, it's her emotional need to find love and to find acceptance and um, that emotional side of it. So I think with this, I, lo- I love the psychological thrillers because there's still that emotional element that you also have with romances, which makes ro- a romance so fun to write. I mean, I, I personally prefer to write a romance where it's driven by something emotionally that's a growth factor for the characters. They don't have sex to have sex. Mm-hmm. If they have sex, there's a reason and something that changes because of the sex scene. Right. Um, or, you know, something they're conquered, they think they're conquering and they actually create another problem. Cause that's true. We, we often do that with sex, don't we? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, that was a long answer for, um, yeah, I think that we, um, I mean, I, I do have to change points of view, so to speak as an author. And oftentimes my system will be like, oh my God, you're starting a romance after you just wrote two thrillers. You know, you have to deep breathe and deep breathe and try and get back into romance mode. And it can be hard at first, but I I usually slide right back in. Well, you talked a little bit about the ups and downs of Hollywood, but you do have a set of books that are coming to the big screen with passion flicks, right? The Secret Life of Amy Benson in do I remember it? that's going to premiere at Readers Take Denver? 
Well, the first season's out, but um, so they're going to give a teaser for season two there. And then Maddie, our lead actress, will be there in Tosca. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and they're going to sign books with me. Um, I I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about season three of that series because um, I, I can't say if nobody's read it because I don't want to give away something, but something really big happens at the end of season two. And there's this new character that comes forward and we got an actor from One Tree Hill and that I'm just, I'm super excited because the, the actor's really great. He's good looking and just the different angle it takes to the series. It's going to be fun. So we'll actually do the season three premiere with Readers Take Denver 24. So, yeah. And what's that been like bringing that where you can now see it on the screen as opposed to just your own imaginings? You, you know, you're going to think this is so funny. I haven't even told Passion Flicks this, but I can't watch the sex scenes <laughs> because, because I wrote them and it just seems weird. I don't know. I can write them and it doesn't feel weird, but seeing them act them out, I'm like, oh, that's so weird. I don't know. It just, but though I, I, I mean, of course I did a little, but, and they did a great job, but, um, and I think, oh my God, how, how awkward must it be to be that intimate on camera, right? Um, it's hard not to think of that. Uh, I think more so because it's my books, you know. But yeah, that's been a lot of fun. It's funny, um, all this path with Inside Out in Hollywood. Oh my God, all this path. I had this dream that Amy would get made and be made sooner. And it really happened. Um, I didn't expect that because, I mean, Hollywood was has been hot and heavy for Inside Out forever. Um, this is really the only time that it's kind of slow now. Um, it was going to be made right at COVID, right yeah. at COVID. Yeah, that was the latest hit. But um, but so, yeah, it's very exciting. And then White Lies follows after this. So they're going to make White Lies. And I, I love White Lies. It's actually a spinoff from Inside Out. So um, I, I realized after I sold it to him, Chris and Sarah are in those books and the White Lies series from Inside Out. And I <laughs> texted Fashion Flicks and said, it's going to be very, very hard for you to cast a Chris and Sarah for me. I'm just warning you right now. She's like, that's okay. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of our readers are also going to be attending Readers Take Denver. So what was the inspiration behind this? Because this is the first year, right? And so what, what led you to wanting to put all of this together? Well, um, some of the readers might know that I had um, Julie Arcat. And um, she was on social media a lot. Um, she was a really special little girl in oriental short hair, which um, they're almost extinct now because of cancer. And she had cancer. Um, but we were able to get three and a half years, fortunately, with radiation. And, you know, writing's been good to me. So we were fortunate to be able to afford that. But in our grief, we started fostering um, animals mostly elderly and Goldens because Julie was obsessed with Goldens. And we just started, the, the need to help more really came to us. And I knew ultimately the way to do that would be a convention, but it's such a big undertaking. And we put it off and we put it off. And then we were just like, we wanna do this. We want to start our charity and help sick animals on a bigger basis. I mean, some of the readers helped me online um, before I ever did this, um, get a wheelchair for a dog, um, save a dog's life who had heartworms. And we did random things like that, but um, this is you know, a passion project. So uh, we went into it knowing it was gonna be hard. It's been like a hundred times even harder than I thought. Though I will say that my staffing business has been golden in this because I mean I had like Mary Kay Cosmetics in Dallas I had tons of people there I had Dell Computer in their heyday I, I had 2,000 employees there I had did the PGA tournaments I did you know all those things so staffing and managing a million projects everywhere for me was kind of like coming home so I was incredibly grateful that it, for that experience and the hotel lady keeps saying I know you're a planner Lisa because <laughs> every time she tells me we'll see how that goes I'm like no no, we, we can't see how that goes. I need to make sure we do something about this, you know? So she's so used to that now. It just became an ongoing joke. We know you're a planner, Lisa. <laughs> Hopefully that pays off. Um, I mean, I, I so that's what, what, what brought it was helping animals. So with Julie's friends. And I mean, just the other day, we were able to help somebody service dog. And the woman cried on the phone. And my husband and I both cried with her. And then afterwards, after um, Diego, my husband, paid the bill for her to have the surgery that the animal needed, um, he said, it feels really good to do this. 
And it was a great little thing to do right in the middle of this, because right now we're just in the, you know, say both of us have been sick, um, exhausted and boxes everywhere and just all the nerves about how things are going to go. And it just reminded us what this is all about. And so that's so it's good. Also, um, in 2024, I, I am old school and I loved the events of old. Um, the early RTs that I went to when I started, where you couldn't wait to go back next year, where you also had the opportunity to meet editors and agents and talk to industry people and just become a part of the world in a bigger way. So we are going to go that route for 24 and we're going to the Gaylord Rockies. And I'm excited about it because um, we already have most of the publishers coming, the major publishers. Um, we have a lot of big name editors, um, all that we'll announce soon. Um, obviously, um, I mentioned the um, the one uh, seminar we're doing, I can't even spit it out now. Um, and we, we have Blackstone Publishing coming. And um, so we're, we're excited about that. But just, you know, in general, taking it to another level, because if I'm going to do this, I want to do it in a way that everybody's excited about all the time. So I feel like this year is like a, only a glimpse of what we're going to be like for the future, because we are already over here for 2024, and I, I can't wait. But this year, though, I'm highly, I mean, I, I feel like everybody's going to have a great time. I almost feel like we tried to do too much. We tried to give everybody too much fun to do. I was so, I was like, they have to have so much fun that maybe I gave everybody too much fun. I don't know. Hopefully not. I'm going to exhaust everybody that I am sure of <laughs> but well I'm yeah. planning on probably taking the day off once I get home yeah I think you'll I want think to think I need the extra recovery probably yeah we I mean we have the amazing Sylvia Day event too we have Kristen Ashley and we have um, Megan Quinn doing her crumble cookies event and the true crime panel I'm I want to be in on that myself because I don't a lot of people don't know what that is we're actually having um, they're reenacting a crime that took place. There'll be a dead body, uh, not real, well, sort of real. And um, there'll be, you know, the yellow tape. There will be notebooks for people to go in and look at the crime scene. And then authors like Sylvia Day and Robert Degani. Um, if you don't know Robert Degani, he's one of the biggest thriller authors out there now. And he's a, such a nice person and humble and so talented and he will be there playing a witness and you'll actually I, and then there'll be people like Isabella Isabella Maldonado who's got a tv show with JLo and Netflix coming out soon yeah. so that's fun to know yeah. uh, for the event get her autograph now not that she's so humble and nice but we'll still be able to get her autograph in the future I mean she's one of those genuinely humble people um anyway she's got a former law enforcement background so she'll be playing an investigator and so the investigators will be kind of helping to guide everybody as they're doing their investigation and I think it's going to be so much fun and um I've already got them to agree to do it again in 24 I want to make it an annual thing I think it's going to be something awesome. that people look forward to yeah. yeah well I'm already in the stage where I have been gathering my books which people who know me are laughing because of how many books I tend to bring on some of these things. So gathering, so I'm ready for my signing. I have my extra stuff for them to do. Um, but fresh fiction events tend to focus more on intimate, smaller events, but yours is going to be huge. How many authors and narrators do you have currently signed up and how many readers are you now expecting? It's a total of 1,250, and so that does include authors um, and narrators, but our authors are down to about 185. Now, I also have learned over a book your authors, because some will cancel, and you want it. But fortunately, we have most of our really amazing ones coming, though we had a few that had a family emergency, you know, family, father had a stroke, that kind of thing, and you mm -hmm. get the understanding. We're all understanding about that. But yeah, right at 1,250, and my thing is, <laughs> That wouldn't feel like a lot for the Gaylord, but for the Hyatt, Grand Hyatt, um, I honestly, it's not that it's small. I feel that it's chopped up in a certain way that I would have liked it to have a better flow. The Gaylord Rockies, what I love about it is, is if you've been to um, Dallas, it's or Nashville or any of those, they're very huge. Right. The entire footprint for the Gaylord um, Rockies here will fit inside the Nashville atrium. So it's a much smaller footprint, even though it still has just as many rooms and the same amount of space, they cut down a lot of the walk space. Thank you. Ah, okay. 
Because yeah, all that walking, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like my steps, but geez, you know, it can be intense. And you also want to be able to find the people that you're there to have fun with too. So I like that also when you walk in, it's just mountains. It is stunning. They pretty much had me at hello with the mountains when I walked in because I was resistant. I didn't want to seem like we were like Book Bonanza. I didn't want to um, it seemed like it was the same experience at all. So I had re refused to look. But as we realized we were getting bigger, I got convinced. And that's when I finally went. But it doesn't even feel like a gay lord. It's a very different property. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. And I love that you guys have the intimate events. I think that both are different and good in a different way. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. See, I'm still yeah. sick. Brain is <laughs> yes, different. We know that, Lisa. But I mean, they're special in their own way. Um, that intimacy that you can have to have more one-on-one -on -one time um, is something that's an experience that you can enjoy in a whole other way. True. Yeah. Yep. Getting to know the authors in different settings. And so when they attend both of these types of events, I know at other larger events, I'll see somebody that I've gotten to know at our smaller, more intimate events with Fresh Fiction, and I'm over there hollering at them, and they're like, oh, it's so good to see you. So again, you feel you have more of that connection when you are seeing them at the bigger signings, and they see a familiar face and know, oh, yes, these are people who read our, our books and are just excited to be there. I love getting to know the readers more intimately. I have some that have actually become friends. Like I know that when Inside Out was really doing so much in Hollywood, I went up and I held a little um, event at the uh, one of the hotels and I didn't have very many people. I had just what I could get in the presidential suite, but a couple of those ladies, I know everything that happens with their kids. They know what's going on with mine. We formed a friendship and I really value that. So those, those intimate um, get togethers, they form a different kind of relationship. Um, and I think that's really um, special. And there's the biz, this industry can feel so big and it, it's just nice to be able to have that um, connection with readers. And they, and again, we love the same things. We love books. So, I mean, we're, we should be easy friends. You um, always have that conversation starter, right? What are you yeah. reading? Yes, very much so. I mean, I, that's how I met my husband. We we met in a Barnes and Noble. He's a huge reader. It sounds like it's a romance novel, but he really is a huge reader. So he's so excited about some of the authors. And one of the authors that we invited, um, his name is Drew Hayes. And he's not a romance writer. He's not a thriller writer. He writes these superhero stories. And he's huge on Audible, like 30,000 reviews. Oh my God, my husband and my stepson love him so much. They like are giddy to get to meet him. And they're telling everybody, read him. You won't be sorry. You won't be sorry. And but it's so fun that he loves to read that much. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, I love that about him. And he's always telling me about his books. Some of his books, I don't have to read because he tells me all about it when we walk right. through the dogs. Um, <laughs> a fun thing in the summer we'll listen to an audiobook together during the dog walks we usually walk three miles and we'll listen and we'll um, talk about the book then later and that is so fun I, I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it or a podcast we listened to Dr. Death and we just kept wanting to walk oh my if you haven't listened to Dr. Death it's so much better than the tv show have you have you listened to the I've seen some of the show I have not listened to it so I'll have to check that out oh, it's so much better like the show I was like oh, they didn't get that right like the podcast is holy wow, you're like, how did this even happen? And in Texas, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. <laughs> well, what is the aspect that you are looking forward to the absolute most for Readers Take Denver? I know well, it's your baby, so it's hard to choose, but if, what's I that mean, one thing? From a personal standpoint, I have to say the red carpet for the Amy Benson series. <laughs> I can't help it. And because, um, uh, so my cat, who's three, she lost her eye during the filming of the first two seasons. Uh, dentist, and I did not know this, but apparently it's quite common that they cause eye loss, you know, in dogs and cats. And I posted about it and I had so many people said, this happened to my cat, this happened to my dog. So dental is not safe, y'all. It's really not. And there she is, my little one eye girl. Um, and so I didn't go to set. So I did not get to meet um, Maddie and Casey and everybody. This is Lola. So she, she my, she's my little superhero. Um, so um, I get to actually meet Maddie for the first time. We've talked a lot, but uh -huh. that's pretty fun. But from the standpoint of the events, I mean, God, 
I think I'm pretty excited about the true crime thing because it's, I still think it's something that you see very often. And I think the people who are involved are so into it. I mean, Sylvia, Robert, Isabella, T.O. Fallon is heading this up. She's the mastermind and she um, is, she's making it amazing. So I think that that, that really has me excited, but in general, I'm just excited to bring everybody together to, um, to, you know, honor Julie and what we're doing together. And um, that, that really, that's emotional to me and to my husband mm -hmm. and all the generous people who are donating. I mean, I had an author say, I'm being a pain in the ass. I'm going to donate to the charity. I'm like, well, you don't have to donate to the charity, no. but I appreciate that. That's what your go-to would be. It's you're not being a pain in the ass. You're just feeling like you are because you're fretting over something, but you're not. Um, but that's the, how everybody's mindset is. We're, we're going to help animals. So. Yeah. Well, what is the best way for our readers to keep up with you, find out what's next, and of course, hear more about Readers Take Denver future events? Well, we already have a um, form on Readers Take Denver now for interest for 2024. We're actually going to open registration at this event. Um, and we have some really fun things planned. Um, like we're going to do an author dinner. So there'll be an author at your table, everybody's table, which is kind of old school too. And I miss those days. So we're going back to that too. Um, but a lot of fun. Um, so they can go onto the Readers Take Denver website and the new website will be updated pretty quickly too. There'll be a splash page for that with some of the headline authors we already have coming. Um, as far as me, um, I'm always on social media. Instagram is probably the easiest way though, because that's where I'm probably most active. I'm not a big TikToker. I won't lie. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to touch your paw. Um, so it's, I'd say Instagram for me. Yeah, or my newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Well, Lisa Renee Jones, thank you so much for joining us this evening, and stick around for our after hours uh, Q and A with our other readers. Okay, great. Thank you.